Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today I have a piece of maple. I believe it may have some spalting in it. This is another piece that Valerie brought me, and it's about, I, I just knocked the corners off. It's about 11 inches in diameter and about 5 inches deep, 4 and, four and 3 quarters or so. And I'm going to get started with my carbide, square carbide cutter. I'm not a big fan of carbide, but I do like to use it when I need to bring a piece down quite a bit. And that's the case here. This, this edge is much higher than this edge is. So I'm just going to take this and just drive it straight in here, just to flatten this all off on the top. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom and create a tenon on the bottom. And I'm attempting to make something I tried to make a few videos ago, but that turned into something else. So uh, I'm going to try a plate here with a bowl on top of it, a bowl attached to the plate. So a plate and a bowl, a bowl and a plate, whatever you want to call it. This is out of balance, so the best I can do is about 520 RPM. I'm going to get my mask and face shield on and we're going to get to turning. Well, that carbide sure does just chew it up, doesn't it? Looks like I can switch to a bowl gouge. Hallelujah. So I'm going to use my bowl gouge to uh, finalize my tenon and put a base on this plate. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I guess just a kind of a little rim around here or something. Uh, this area right here on the side is probably just about the right thickness for a plate so I will uh, after I finalize this we'll start working on the side and the plan I hope I have the skills to pull this off because I'm not so sure the plan is to come in from the top side you know down like a bowl down like a bowl on top of this plate I'm gonna have the bevel of this gouge the cutting edge of this gouge wanting to dig into the top of the plate as I come around here it's just gonna be a lot of fun but <laughs> we'll figure it out, uh-huh. But first I want to uh, finalize my tenon, so that's next. Turn about 700 RPM. So I'm going to work on the edge of the plate here because I have nothing, nothing right here. So I've got to bring this down in diameter some and then I'll start coming in this way with the bowl, I guess. So now I guess it's a matter of coming in here to the top of this plate and inside of that. Maybe I should start at the very top and start working my way in. I just really don't know. Of course that's just the wrong direction to be turning. I don't know, maybe this isn't possible, but it must be. That's what we got to be careful of. Hmm. Well, maybe I swept back. 
Of course, that's not sharp at all. Like I said, maybe I need to start at the top and work down, but, but it's the wrong way to turn. I don't know. Like I said, maybe I don't have the skills for this. I just, I want to go in there, but it doesn't seem to want to let me. Come on, somebody speak up. How do I approach this? Well, I don't think I can just jam it in there. That's working, but I sure don't feel comfortable doing it. This plate edge is too thick. But that's not a problem to take that down, I guess. And shoving that in there just doesn't seem like a good idea at all. Now I don't want this to be flat on the top, I want it to go down to match the bevel on the bottom. I probably ought to sharpen up because this was dull to start with. I'll be back. Okay, still with the uh, half inch swept back gouge. It seems like if I'm, you know, I could chicken out and I could say there that's a, a bowl on a plate but it seems like it should get back in that corner a lot further. The bowl should have a narrower base. So that's what I'm sneaking up on. I also want to bring up these sides. I want it to have a natural edge but uh, a little higher than that. See, we're getting a little bit higher here. That's good. Need to go a little higher more. I should have probably looked to see if someone had done a, a video like this. That would have been smart. Duh. I'm sure, I'm sure it's been done plenty of times. Maybe back to the swept back to bring that in some more. starting to look like something. I still think it has to go back in there further and I still need to come up just a tad higher on these. This is the lowest, lowest one. Back to standard grind. I have no idea how I'm going to get a clean cut on here. Normally you want to be coming this way, but that's not possible. Shear scrape, I guess. We'll try the sweat back again.
I still need to come in there. I'm trying a little bit. I'm chicken. But I need to come in that way to match this bevel on the outside on the bottom. At least I feel like I need to do that. That's getting better. Not good, but better. This is nerve-wracking. I hope you can see good enough. Can you see the chisel at all? Not really, huh? Well, it's over here by me. I still would like to get so it doesn't look like it's a part. Uh, you know, like they don't look like they're connected, like it looks like this is sitting on there. But I don't know how I can get into that corner any tighter. And I think this is still too thick, probably. That's about three-eighths of an inch, almost. I don't think most plates are three-eighths of an inch. So somehow I need to come out here on this edge or maybe on the bottom edge. Either way, I guess, would work. But it's working. It is working. It ain't easy. I'm not even sure it's fun, but it's working. I'll probably regret this. Well, it's not half bad, but this is still too thick. Well, thanks for watching so far, coming along on this kind of fun journey. Uh, kind of fun, kind of. See you tomorrow. Well, it's the next day, and I've had a little time to think about this. And I did uh, go in and look at some of the plates in the house that we use. Dinner plates. And I do have the shape of this correct at least according to one of the plates that we have with a, a bevel coming up on the bottom and then a matching bevel going in on the top this rim I think is too thick so I'll be bringing that down I also think this base that I have it sitting on is a little too pronounced so I'm gonna waste away some of that until it's a little less tall and maybe more rounded I'm still not real happy with what I have going on here in this corner. It's just, uh, I, I need to bring the bowl in further so that you can tell the difference between the plate and the bowl. So that it looks like the bowl is sitting on the plate rather than a part of it. Uh, not easy to do, I promise. It's not easy to do. Maybe for someone else, but I, I just, I'm having real problems with uh, chisel angle. I do have a crack here that goes all the way through to here. It's not deep, maybe a half an inch. So I'm just going to be working away, finessing, trying to get that corner better. That's probably where I'm going to start right now. I hope this camera angle works for you. Uh, my shoulder might get into the picture right in this area here, but I don't think I'll block the, the work or the ball. I'm going to be starting with a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge and we'll be turning just over 700 RPM. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. That's going to be fun to try and fix. 
I don't have much tool support right here at the end of the tool rest. Well, okay, I'll, I'll work on this edge here. And I'll, I'll get back in that corner, but I'm just going to have to be more careful. <laughs> Easier said than done. I can't do that. I'm going to go back to a half inch. Better still some tear out. Well, I need to get back in here and fix my whoopsie, and I'm still working on that corner. I'm just gonna have to do it with the tool rest away, I guess. Back to the 3 8 gouge for a minute. Just trying to get in that corner. <laughs> so hard to do. Oh well, maybe I did it. Yeah, that feels good. Looks okay. What I'd like to do is undercut that bowl, but I just can't get a good angle. It scares me to death. Yeah, I'm calling that good. Now I still have this rim is way too thick. I think I'm going to take it off the bottom instead of off the top just because I have better access. But I think the turning is done here and here. So now I'm going to reduce the thickness of this plate to probably just about half of what it is and then work on this base and reduce the, the size of that as well, the height of it which will be even higher after I reduce this. I think we are ready for sanding. It's going to be fun getting back in that corner. So that's what it's going to look like for the next hour and a half, two hours. And I'll bring you back when it's time to put a finish on here. I haven't decided what that'll be yet. So see you later. The sanding is done. And I decided on Howard Feed and Wax for a finish. And so that's what I'm doing is applying the finish. I'm going to have to take a little, little brush with some of this feed and wax on it and dab it into some of these little bug holes. There's not too many on this piece, but there are some, and I like to get it in there so that the color is uniform like that. See, I can't, I can't get it in there with a rag. So I'll do that after I get this all wiped on. I will say I'm pretty happy with this. It was a... Uh, well, I'm not done with it, am I? But I, I like to think I'm done with the hard part. There's not a lot of spalting on here, but there is some. Well, that's a relief. Sanding's done, finish is done. Outside profile is done. Now, I never did say, but I just had this between centers. Just had a 
four prong drive center on there where I usually use a uh, woodworm screw so how's that look so far look kinda like what I had in mind a bowl on a plate So that's just uh, barely sitting in there. Then I'll bring up the tailstock and drive that in with the ram before I tighten the jaws. That way it's well centered and well seated. And I don't think we're going to need the tailstock on this. Boy, uh, this piece has sure been a test for me. I typically turn a bowl with a 5 8 inch bowl gouge and about not much else. And this time I used, I don't know, five or six different gouges. I hardly ever use the sweat back, except for taking off the tenon. And I used it quite a bit here. Okay, I'll get my mask and face shield on and we'll get to hollowing this thing out. Five eighths inch bowl gouge and we're turning at uh, just under 700 RPM. Whoa, I just heard something go crack. Stick with me, baby. Too much work into you now. I did fill these cracks with CA. Nothing else, because they're so fine. Okay, how thick we're going to make the walls? Same as the plate which is down not much over eighth of an inch thick. I want to do that. I just don't know if I can with these cracks. We'll see how it goes. You know, that's about as thin as I better go. I'll get it thinner here, but that's about as thin as I better go. It's about a quarter inch. You can hear it. Well, I was going to do this off camera, but I thought maybe somebody could gain something from it. It's only about the second time I've ever done it this way. Uh, what I did is I put some tape on the back side because I don't want to screw up my finish. And then I went in the house and I got some of the darkest coffee, finest grind, darkest coffee I could find. And now I'm going to tap it in here, put some CA with it. Maybe I'll put the CA in first so it has something to grab onto. Hopefully tapping on it like that will get it down into the crack. This is actually a different crack. This is the one that I was concerned about. This one just just opened up while I was turning right in the middle here. And I just don't have anything else to use. I know a lot of guys use a lot of different things. Usually I, I tend to just leave cracks. If they happen naturally, I tend to just leave them because I like stuff as natural as can be. But in this case, I'm afraid it's going to get worse and open up and be ugly. A little more CA. And a little more coffee.
one of these days I suppose I'll get into the whole colorized inlay stuff but so far it hasn't held much interest for me <clears throat> You know, it's actually sounding a little more solid than it was. We'll try a little more CA here. Okay, well, I'm going to let that set up for about 10 minutes just to be careful. And we'll get back to turning. Well, as I was filling this one I, and waiting for it to dry, I got to looking around and I found another one over here. And it's too too fine to get anything into, so I just put CA in there. And the same thing over here, just CA. And the same thing over here. So hopefully this will all stick together. So I'm getting ready to get back to turning. I'm just going to leave this tape on here for whatever help it might offer, which I doubt if that's any. It'll come off soon, or I'll, I'll pull it off, but I'm going to leave it on for now while I clean up these glue, glue marks and my coffee grounds over here. I'm just going to use a half-inch swept-back gouge to kind of clean that up. Okay, a little cleanup, and then time for sanding. So I'm going to start out with 80 grit, uh, two inch disc on my angle drill, and we're just going to start the sanding. So I'm just going like that. This way. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the next hour or so, starting with 80 grit up through 400. And I'll bring you back when it's time to put some finish on there. Well, that wasn't too bad. It took me about an hour to do the sanding. And I've already put a, a second coat of uh, this Howard Feed and Wax on the outside. And now I'm just putting it on the inside where I've just finished the sanding. And we are getting close, boys and girls. I'll give this about a half an hour to dry, buff it up, and then it'll be time to turn it around and take off that tenon, and we'll be done. Yippee. The piece is dried and buffed and ready to go, so let's get it off the chuck. And then we will Put this non-slip cloth on there and bring the bowl up and the tailstock. And I still have my center hole there. And then we'll just take a half inch bowl gouge and commence to removing the tenon. About 500 RPM. I don't often decorate the bottom of my pieces, but I think in this case I'm going to I'll put a little groove right here. I'm going to put another one right here. Yeah, that looks okay. 
that was just a quarter inch spindle gouge. Now I'm going to take a 3 8 inch uh, swept back gouge to work on this tenon. Now I'm going to turn the speed down around 200. That just helps make it a little more controllable. And I'm just going to apply the uh, bevel of the gouge to my left against the bottom of the bowl towards the headstock. And we'll just work at cutting that right off of there. So as soon as that little nub stops turning, I'll just turn off the power and we'll be done. I left a little bit too much meat on there so it's having the gouge is having a hard time getting in to make the cut. There we go. So now I just have this unfinished area to sand up and I'll do that over here on the workbench. Well here it is, one bowl on plate. It's maple, uh, lightly spalted, a few bug holes, a few bug tunnels, nothing dramatic. I'm really glad I did this. So I'm pretty happy with it. I think it would probably look better if it wasn't a natural edge. If it looked more like just a bowl on a plate. But, uh, looks like a natural edge bowl on a plate, I guess. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd appreciate it. Your comments are always welcome and I respond to all of them. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I surely appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.